Welcome to Cujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integration. Welcome back to another session here at Cujo Sound. In the previous video, we took a 3D emitter like quite quickly and put it on these fire barrels. And that was really nice because now we have fire when we're walking around the level. As you can see, if we click them and open it up, the sound emitter is still here and it has everything that we still want and need from it. Now, what can we do with the same emitter that we made here? Because we can do a lot of things with it. And the point is that we can add it to a lot of things and then our level will more and more come to life. If you add it to a lot of 3D elements at the same time, your level will naturally almost almost not need an ambient room tone or other things like that. So let's get to it. Uh, one of the things that we have is this lamp post here, a light pole, and it has a spotlight. What about this spotlight here? What about it? Yeah, you might say. We can click our project, find our audio tools and our audio emitter. We drag and drop it onto the spotlight so that now the spotlight has this. We then apply it so that now we have our audio emitter here attached to this item here. Don't forget to set it to zero, zero, zero so that our emitter is located at the same spot as the item. Well, what we're gonna do is that it has a sound effects. The fire barrel is still working up here and we don't want that. We want a shorter attenuation and we want a different sound. So what we are going to do is that we are going over here in Wise. And in Wise, we are now have another 3D effect. We're going to make an actor mixer here that we are going to call the Spotlight. And we are going into our folder here with all these things. I already have an electric buzz that I made from before. It's called the Streetlight. We drag and drop it into it. Here we go. and it plays very nicely. So over here in our default work unit, you shouldn't really have them in the default work unit like this. You should categorize them into folders and work units, but we'll get to that later. For sake of the purpose, we're not gonna do it. Create an empty event, SFX 3D street light. Let's call it that. And we're going to be making the street light here. This sound is so short, if we double click it here, as you can see, it's only five seconds long, so we don't need any form of seek to it. There's no pattern in it that will make it recognizable, so it doesn't matter if they're playing at the same time. Now, this street light here, positioning, we are going to need a new position because we can't use the generic 25 meter that we did before. We are just going to say 25 meters, but you can right click and say, show in sync group two and it'll pop up over here so now we can duplicate it and say call it 10 meters instead click to edit and change this to 10 meters now have in mind that this kind of change doesn't always work when you just change the amount of max distance because maybe this transition here doesn't necessarily work but let's try it out here in the street light here we change it from 25 to 10 meters Yeah, it works kind of okay. Good. And it's 10 meters, which means that we over here in Wise should be setting our sphere collider, which is the one that turns the sound on and off, to something slightly more than 10 meters because we're very close to the sound, so we don't want the sound to be yanking in and out whenever we enter and exit the collider. So let's set it to 15 so that we can smoothly hear the whole thing when we're entering and exiting the collider. So our street light here in Wise, here we click it and we have our event over here with the street light. We also need a stop event, which we are going to be creating like this. Let's duplicate that one, find this one, select stop instead of play, and you save your project. So now we have two events, one for the street light and one to stop it. Let's go over here into street light and let's give it a small fade in and the street light can have a small fade out like that. And we save, press F7, right click, generate sound banks, and that is that good. So we can now copy the name of this one here, go back into Unity, click our lamppost, we already have it here, select that we want street light there and we want street light stop to be here, save, and what do you think? You think this will work if I just press play? Let's see. And so it's playing all over the place, but it's a little loud 
when we are near the emitter here. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap at escape and go into Wise and check it out. So in Wise here, we're going to click reconnect, press F6 and see that the street light here is playing and then double click it. And then we can get this parameter up here for everything and we can turn it down if we want to. So how loud do we want our street light to be as we are walking under it like this? We want it to be maybe like minus 15. Okay, minus 15. Okay, so disconnect. We save over here and we can generate the sound banks. There we go. So the next time that we play this game in our editor, the sound will now be played at minus 15, which means that now we can run around and all these light poles will play that sound again. So the thing is that we don't have any wind and there's a lot of things that we don't have in the game yet. But just adding that light pole and this fire here means that we can actually run around in this environment and it kind of comes to life. When we're going to add more things, the point is of this light here is that when we run past it, it'll just bring a little bit of life into the 3D environment, and that's what we want, because that's what's needed to create a believable and really, really awesome 3D soundscape. That's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Kujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity, and Wise integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it, and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.